Hi, this is a tutorial on DMX lighting, specifically DMX 512. It's, DMX stands for Digital Multiplex. It's a standard, it's called ANSI E1.11 lighting standard. Um, here's a, we're going to take a little bit, uh, step back, look at vintage lighting councils. So here's a vintage lighting council, and uh, this is a really old one. And what we have is right here at the bottom, I don't know if you can see this, there's a, a row of black faders. Each one of these faders would control one lighting fixture. Uh, this one has, it looks like it has the actual uh, AC control modules built in. Often these are on a, uh, in a separate rack in, or electrical panel that would control it. Uh, one of the things that these use is because they, they're, uh, they use the old lighting bulbs and stuff is they take a lot of space and use a lot of electrical power. So the analog lighting fixtures is uh, they run bulbs, right? So light bulbs, they use lots of power. Uh, they generate lots of heat. So typically when the lights are on the stage or, or the uh, um, wherever you are is getting hot, you don't want to touch these, you'll burn your hands. Each light had one purpose. Um, you couldn't change it unless you went up there and physically changed it. If you want to change the color, you had to get up on a ladder and use a, a gel and put a gel in front of it. And that, so they were kind of awkward to use. DMX fixtures um, can be used for stage lights, spotlights, floodlights. Uh, they're LEDs, typically LED lightings. Uh, because they're LED, they're typically low power. Uh, they use less heat. Uh, the more powerful ones will still burn you, but uh, they use a lot less heat. They don't heat up a room. Uh, you don't need all the air conditioning that you need in a normal studio or a, a stage to handle all the lighting. Uh, they're programmable and they're multicolor. So there's an example of one right in the front. It's a PAR. A, um, they call it PAR for parabolic reflector, and that's the old term for it. And this one has 12 LEDs. If you count the number of LEDs, there's 12 on it. And uh, uh, you have green, red, blue, or red, green, blue, and a white LED. So you can actually program this one to be any color you want and any combination of colors. And that you can also have robotic lights. Um, Moving headlights is a proper term for them, like this one at the bottom. And you can have uh, gobos on them, which would give you patterns. So you can actually control it. Some other things that could be called the DMX filter, filter are uh, fog machines and lasers. And you can have things like lead strips. So now you have programmable lead strips that you can uh, use like this, put it on the ceiling, on the floor, wherever you like. And you can control all the colors and, and the sequencing of the LEDs. Uh, DMX 512 is a standard. It's uh, E1-11, 2008. It also has uh, USITT standards, DMX 512-A. Uh, standard for the communications networks that are used to control stage lighting fixtures and effects. Um, just for your interest, it employs EIA 5, 485 differential signaling at its physical letter, le layer. And it's unidirectional, which means you can only send information to the light and you don't receive any status report back. Uh, the connections, um, the fi fixtures are daisy chained in. You'll have a DMX in and a DMX out port on it. And uh, what happens is you connect the DMX in is the input from a controller. So a controller would go in. Then you take the output and daisy chain or hook up to the uh, next uh, fixture. Now what happens is that there's uh, the actual standard calls for a five pin XLR connector. Uh, I don't have a picture of one, but it's just uh, five pins. Uh, two of the pins aren't used. And the, the, re the reason they did that is that if you're in a professional environment, you don't want to accidentally hook up an audio cable to it, right? Um, you know, it might damage something. Most of the time it doesn't do anything, but that was the idea behind the five pin fixture, uh, five, five pin connector XLR. Uh, many manufacturers use a three pin is just because it's cheap and there, uh, there's tons of three pin XLR cables that you can use and they work perfectly fine. Um, there's a limitation of 32 fixtures in a cable run, right? Uh, the last device should be terminated. So terminate it, you need like 120 ohm resistor, like a, uh, and you put it between pins two and three for a three pin XLR. And you could just uh, put it into a, a little connector like the one that's shown. Uh, here's an example of a daisy chain. So what happens in the lower left corner, you have your uh, DMX controller. You have a DMX out. It goes into the first uh, device. Looks like a moving head uh, fixture. 
and then DMX out goes from there to the DMX in the next one. You daisy chain all the way through. Uh, you got a little box there. It looks like it's splitting it up into some different universes or different controllers. Maybe it has to go farther distance. And that at the very end, the last device should be terminated, right, to get proper configuration. Um, so we'll stop right there, and then what we'll do is part two with the universes, addresses, and controllers.